concerted effort at this time of year to distract, to kind of take away the opportunity to enjoy or participate in the season that God has given us. You see, the reality is we can always enjoy every day because God has created it. So in six days, God created the heavens and the earth and all that there is. He rested and we know that he caused it, created it, did it, and said it was good. Now, then he cursed it because of our sin and sure, there's creation is under a curse and we're under a curse. But God can take something that's under a curse and make it for good. The same way that he can take the holiday, irregardless of what it is, it doesn't matter whether it's Easter or Christmas, whether it's Kwanzaa or New Year's, whether it's Boxer Day or Festivus Day, Festivus Day, or whether it's any other day, because it's the day that the Lord has made. We can rejoice and be glad in it because God made it first. You see, people that I'm really amazed at the arguments that people make. Well, you know, we really can't do Christmas because Christmas was invented after the pagan holiday. So, you know, pagan pagan came first, Christmas came later. You know, the two are mixed. You know, no, sorry, you can't do it. Well, I'm a little bit weird, you know. I'm kind of strange. You know, my gypsy mind, Jesus' gypsy mind, kind of goes, Well... I think, putting on my thinking cap, didn't God create every day? And didn't God say, this is the day the Lord has made, I can rejoice and be glad in it? Which came first, the chicken or the horse? <laughs> Whatever you wrote in on, could you please ride out on? Because no offense to you, I think you laid an egg. <laughs> Kind of embarrassing. <laughs> you rode in on a horse, got off and laid an egg. <laughs> Time to pick that egg back up and head out because you got a little scrambled along the way. <laughs> boy, the things that people will try to fry your brains on. Oh, boy. <laughs> think think about it. Poached eggs on toast. <laughs> you can't celebrate Christmas because <laughs> it's the wrong day. Oh, boy. But you know what you can do? You can rejoice in the day the Lord has made. Ha! So, just what is the problem here? The issue has always been what we do as opposed to what God has done. So you have to always turn it around. Whenever you find yourself losing ground in the battle for your mind or your soul or your feelings or your emotions, you got to turn, as it were, your eyes upon Jesus. But no, you know, it's a nice, beautiful song, but sometimes I know it's hard. But you got to turn it around. you got to use the noodle, you know, knock on the noggin. You know, kind of get to the place where you realize the word is first and everything else is second. Yes, there's a holiday going on. You can participate in it if you want to. You don't have to. You can do what you choose to do. But you, the Lord himself has chosen to give us this time to celebrate and Sure, we're supposed to rejoice in every day, but we could celebrate this day, too, because of the glad tidings of joy that were given us, because of the remembrance and the recognition that the entire world is paying attention. We got your attention. Let's talk about something that's worldwide attention-getting. Jesus. So what if there's Santa Claus, too? Who cares? I like him. He's kind of funny. <laughs> no, I've never played Santa. <laughs> it's not kosher. Stop kidding. That joke. That was a joke. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> All we got to do is put, you know, since they tried to make Jesus into Orthodox, I'm sure sooner or later somebody's going to come up with an Orthodox Santa. I'm sure of that. <laughs> oh, boy. But. The reality, in this time of year, irregardless of whether you want to make it super religious or you want to make it just as much fun as you can or you have a mixture of family and friends together, remember, 
This is the day the Lord has made. You can rejoice and be glad in it. God has given you the opportunity because you have been given great grace to extend to all those around you. Because the same grace that you've been given that forgave you all your sins, you can use that same grace to extend to others to forgive them all their sins so that you don't have to react to the beginning or the end of this season at all. You can just enjoy it for what it is. But to the upright there arises light in the darkness. Who is among you that fears the Lord, that obeys the voice of his servant, that walks in darkness and has not light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. The commandment is a lamp and the law is a light. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, when I fall. I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord, because I have sinned against him, until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness, not my own. Often people read those and they forget, it's not about what you did, but what's been done. It's not about how good you are, but what God has made and created. It's not about how you can accomplish something, but what God has made perfect that you can't make undone. A new, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, the body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? You know, I often get told at times, all these people looking for secret meanings and mysterious happenings and end times prophecies and trying to work together their own purposes in something that isn't obviously written in the scriptures. I know people that pretend like there's something evil about Christmas trees. There's nothing evil about Christmas trees. That's some pagan idea that people came up with and said, huh, kind of looks like, you know, we got three out of four things kind of fit. It's a tree. It's a tree. And it's got light. Never mind that, you know, you got to cut it up and make it into the image of, you know, your God. You know, and it's got to kind of like be cut down and does all kinds of things too that, you know, are really pretty bizarre. Oh no, never mind that it doesn't look anything like the trees that were being used or anything like the pagans that were using them. But we got to make it fit. So, in their eyes, they see, for some reason, darkness. Because they are only looking at darkness. They're looking for to find something that isn't there. And that's why you have to be careful about what you're looking at. Because if you're constantly looking for something, you'll find it. If you're always looking to find faults with people, you'll find faults with people. That's Believe me, that's not a problem. I can do that in five seconds. <laughs> I'm the master of fault finding. Man, there's a fault in the earth. There's a fault in San Andreas. There's a fault over underneath the East Coast. There's a fault in the West Coast. Both are going to fall off the, off the... Both are going to fall into the, each ocean and the United States be wiped out. No, it's not. <laughs> Who cares if there's a fault line there? It doesn't mean it's going to happen. It just means there's a fault line there. We all got fault lines. I've got fault lines in me. doesn't mean I'm going to fall on them. It just means that they've been susceptible. God takes care of that part. Grace covers and the multitude of sins is covered by love. Love covers a multitude of sins. So, bingo. If you love, he's got it covered. So, Whenever you get these people that want to find pagan meaning or find this is wrong or do and say that's right, see what they're full of. Go look at their website. Go read all their material. Find out what they talk about the most. What's on their lips as they speak? What's in their eyes as they see? What is it that they put inside their body constantly over and over again? What's their ministry all about? If it's only about fault finding, and they don't have anything about the gospel, and they don't know Jesus. Did it give you a hint? <laughs> How great is the darkness they're in? 
They're only looking at dark because they only see dark. Yeah, so many of these expert sites that tell me their expert opinions about how wrong so many other people are. And when I look at their site, I don't see anything about their site that says what's right. So then I go, you know, Lord, if they can't tell me what's right, how do they know what's wrong? Because obviously, when you said that at whatever you're looking at, you know, and you're filling yourself up with, that's what you're going to be talking about. So if people are only looking to find faults, then that's all they're going to talk about. So a lot of times out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And you can pretty much tell what a person is interested in by what they talk about, by what their walk is about, by what they share, by what they read, by what they say, and by what they speak. And you know what? I'm going to give you a little secret Christmas lesson. Want to know how to reverse engineer something? I believe in reverse engineering, by the way. If you really want to change what's in your heart, bring what's outside your mouth, what you want to put inside your heart. Reverse engineering. Don't tell the Chinese that. Don't tell the sinners that. Don't tell Satan that. He might figure it out. Reverse engineering, guys. Speak it. Now, it doesn't mean speak it and it becomes it, but just if it's out of the abundance of heart the mouth speaks, then if you want to change yourself, fight the tendency in your mind that I'm going to say something a blessing instead of a curse. Reverse engineer it. Bless instead of curse. Give grace and mercy instead of condemnation. Bring out the salvation messages. Share and care. And guess what? You'll put it in there. It's reverse engineering. It works for me.